Hello, hi and greetings everyone. This is a new video on uh, basics of respiration. It's essentially we are going to see the mechanism of breathing and uh, some essential concepts. Since you have inquired on uh, the intrapulmonary pressures and the intrapleural pressures, we just try to discuss on the basics right now. So in order to understand the mechanism of breathing, what you have to know is one simple law in physics that's very important, which is nothing but the Boyle's law. Uh, you'll be very sure we'd be, we'd have studied in our elementary physics everyone. This law is quite simple. It's straightforward and uh, it says that the volume in a closed container is inversely proportional to the pressure changes. So which means that when the volume of a container, fixed container, increases, then the pressure drops and the volume in a fixed container incre decreases and the pressure increases. So for example, if you have some container, like this a closed container which has no relationship to the atmospheric pressure and it has something filled inside like fluid or air, whatever it is, it's filled inside. and. Uh, without doing anything you are just expanding this container now what really happens is the particles inside becomes less denser as the volume increases as a result your pressure drops this is what the basic concept is imagine this container to be the pleural sac and done it's done it's everything is understandable after this. Imagine this container to be a plural sac. Now what really happens is, in real life, uh, let me take the lungs, uh, let me draw the lungs first, and this is going to be the lungs. And you know there are uh, two surfaces uh, of the pleura, which is the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. Let me do a red for the visceral pleura. You know what happens is this visceral pleura is very closely applied to the lung so that it just sticks on to the lung. This visceral pleura, it cannot move away from the lung. And now we are going to draw the parietal pleura. This is the parietal pleura. And uh, what it does is it is attached to the thoracic wall. Now you have studied uh, in our elementary physiology in the first year or second year what now happens is the lungs have a tendency to collapse as a natural tendency to collapse but we don't know the reason it's because of two reasons I'll tell you the reasons one reason is very straightforward it is elastic because it contains a lot of elastic fibers especially the alveoli it is elastic and number two is uh, the surface tension of the alveoli, the surface tension inside the alveoli, for the further matters. You have a constant surface tension because of the water molecules present inside the alveoli, which is neutralized, not completely, to some extent, by something called surfactant, which contains one hydrophilic end, which binds to the water molecules and hydrophobic ends, which project on the lumen. So, this is what the surfactant does. It tends to decrease the surface tension, but not completely. So when you take all the alveoli as a sum, you definitely have some amount of surface tension existing throughout the lung and it is in a constant state of a tendency to collapse on itself. So this pressure is determined experimentally to be a positive of 1.5 millimeters of mercury. So now, this is the chest wall is semi rigid uh, it cannot be compressed so easily so now what happens is this has a tendency to pull the visceral pleura inside and but the chest wall is rigid it cannot be moved the ribs and the diaphragm and the abdominal surface whatever it is it cannot be pulled up uh, pulled inside and it is rigid so this pulling creates a negative pressure. How it creates a negative pressure? Because of this pulling, there is a slight increase in volume in the pleural cavity. Since it's a closed container and it is not in communication with the atmospheric pressure, the pressure cannot neutralize and hence you have a decrease in pressure.
So that's why you have a constant negative pleural pressure of minus 1.5, which may be up to minus 2.5 millimeters of mercury. And now, what happens during inspiration is entirely different. Now, what happens during inspiration is, I'll draw the lung again. This is the lung, and uh, we'll draw the visceral pleura, which is added to the lung once again and the parietal pleura which is adhered to the chest wall so now what happens is because of active contraction of your diaphragm as well as the external intercostal muscles the chest wall try expands the chest wall expands this pulls this parietal pleura apart but this force is pulling downwards so what really happens here this this force is pulling inwards so what really happens is two forces are in the opposite directions and hence the volume is increased to so much extent, uh, extent that the negative pressure inside the pleural space get augmented to minus 6 to around minus 10 millimeters of mercury so this is huge right this is more than my uh, the positive of 1.5 exerted by the alveoli so since this is too much the lungs tend to expand the lungs tends to expand along with the chest wall so even in so for instance if you are doing inspiration very forcibly with the active contraction of all the muscles the negative pleural pressure can interpleural pressure can go up to even minus 30 millimeters of mercury this is huge isn't it so now what happens during expiration is and one more thing you want to know about the expiration is during expiration you normal normal quiet expiration you don't really tend to use your diaphragm or your abdominal muscles or your intercostal muscles you just tend to stop inspiration that is the mechanism of expiration now what really happens is I'll draw another lung so this is an expanded lung and uh, this is once again your sorry for the pretty bad diagram this is your visceral pleura and this is your parietal pleura and what happens during expiration is you doesn't really use your muscles you just stop inspiring so the forces acting outward are just stop it becomes zero so now this force becomes maximum this positive of 1.5 millimeters of mercury becomes maximum and suddenly the lung collapses on itself so this is what the mechanism of inspiration and expiration and when the pleural pressure reaches a negative of minus 1.5 millimeters of mercury now uh, your lung stops collapsing further so it stops it comes back to its neutral position so with a point to notice in a quiet inspiration and expiration the intrapleural pressure intrapleural pressure or the in other words you can call it as trans pulmonary pressure remains negative During both quiet inspiration as well as expiration, the intrapleural pressure and the transpulmonary pressure remains negative. It doesn't get positive. It gets positive only in a couple of scenarios. When you do a very forcible expiration or a valsalva, you tend to get a positive pressure, positive intrapleural pressure, and uh, or in other sense, if there is something else in the pleural cavity that is compressing on the lungs. For say, you have some fluid in the pleural cavity, which is always called as a pleural effusion. Or you have some uh, air in the pleural cavity, which is otherwise called as pneumothorax. You tend to increase the pleural pressure to positive uh, thing. So this positive thing which is acting inwards augments on the 
already existing surface tension and the collapsing pressure of the alveolus of plus 1.5 millimeters of mercury and uh, the lungs tend to collapse. That's why you, in a blue effusion, if there is a blue effusion collected over here, this tends to collapse the lungs in this segment and you have a pneumothorax, you get a collapsed lung all over in all the places. Now one more concept uh, you're going to see in this is the concept of why the residual volume is present why the residual volume is present in the lungs for this to understand you need uh, some important concepts on the way to understand the most important of them all is the dynamic airway compression it's called the dynamic airway compression and also the concept of EPP or something called as equal pressure point equal pressure point so what really does this dynamic airway compression and equal pressure point means this is a really important thing so residual volume occurs uh, I will again draw the spirometry and uh, this is the tidal volume and this is the inspiratory reserve volume this is the expiratory reserve volume this one and uh, what you get here is the residual volume so no matter however forcibly you exhale you cannot expel the entire air from your lungs which is called as the residual volume so why does it happen so in order to measure the residual volume you have to exhale very forcibly more than your tidal volume so that is your prerequisite so residual volume should occur after a forced expiration so do a forced expiration so I will draw a lung, this is a model of the lung and uh, I will draw an alveoli, it has a numerous bronchiolic generations and after it reaches outside it becomes a larger alveoli and reaches the outer atmosphere. So now I'm just, it is a simple diagram of the alveoli connecting to the larger airways and outside the lungs. Two important concepts you have to learn here is the pleural cavity are applied to the smaller airways like the visceral pleura is closely applied to the airways and the alveoli as well right this is the number one concept you have to understand and number two concept you have to understand is the larger airways contain the cartilaginous rings whereas the smaller airways does not, the small, smaller airways does not contain the cartilaginous rings. So what happens is, when the pressure outside exceeds the pressure inside the airways, these smaller airways tends to collapse. This is concept number two. So now you are trying to exhale very forcibly. So during forcible expiration, you get two forces acting on the airways and the alveoli so one is the recoil pressure in the alveoli which you can take it a positive of plus 10 centimeter of water and the second one because you are exhaling forcibly you are contracting all your muscles and you are adding up another 30 centimeters of water pressure from outside so from the pleural cavities point of view you are going to add up 30 centimeters of water in all the directions here 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 but from the alveolar point of view including the 10 centimeter of recoil pressure you are going to have 40 centimeters of water so since the pressure at this point is 30 and the pressure coming from the alveol is 40 the air moves out and as soon as your alveolar uh, recoil pressure decreases after certain extent it starts decreasing the alveolar recoil pressure after it comes back to its original size this recoil pressure is gone and it's no more so now your alveolar pressure here and the pressure in the smaller airways becomes 30 centimeter of water so it is at this point your airways tends to collapse on itself so after that no matter if you increase the pressure here for instance 
Now I will draw another diagram. I will draw another diagram. Right, I will draw another diagram and uh, I will again apply the visceral pleura here and I will again apply the visceral pleura here. Now there is, imagine there is no recoil pressure inside the alveolar and it has come back to the normal size and the recoil pressure is zero now. So no matter how much ever you increase the extra pulmonary pressure, it also increases the pressure on the visceral pleura and hence on the airways and uh, it tends to collapse the airways. So the airway collapses on itself and no more air can be expelled out. So this is the concept of dynamic airway compression. This is why you cannot uh, expire expel entire air from your lungs and it is also called as physiological air trapping and what is equal pressure point is the point at which in the smaller area it usually occurs in the smaller areas the point at which the pressure on the visceral pleura becomes exactly equal to the pressure inside the airways or in other words the pressure the point at which the pressure outside the airways is equal to pressure inside the airways that is called as equal pressure point so this equal pressure point uh, normally lies in the smaller airways sometimes it can lie very 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 early it can the equal pressure point uh, in the smaller areas can happen very early because of the resistance of the air flows for example if you say something like uh, emphysema and uh, you have very high resistance because of narrowing of the smaller airways and hence after crossing through this resistance if the airways uh, doing some 38 centimeters of water including the recoil pressure and uh, pressure outside is a constant 30 centimeter of water now if you try to exhale and after crossing this area of resistance the pressure drops to for say 25 centimeter of water here and uh, this is so much uh, lesser than the 30 centimeter exerted outside and the airway collapse on itself. If you have a smaller airways disease, if you have resistance in the smaller airways, then this equal pressure point tends to occur at a much earlier phase of expiration and it's very difficult to ex exhale air uh, in conditions like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and hence you get pathological air trapping and uh, emphysema and dilation of the alveoli. Now along with it uh, we will see one more concept of uh, obstructive airways disease because of uh, I dealt about emphysema and obstruction it's worth uh, learning another concept on obstructive airways disease which is why you get tend to get uh, problems with expiration in smaller airways disease and uh, problems with inspiration in larger airways disease. So this is a relatively simple concept and these are all basics and it's better to learn. So I will draw another alveoli again. This is the alveoli and uh, these are the smaller airways and once again these are the larger airways. These larger airways are supported by cartilages whereas smaller airways does not. And uh, what now happens is this is the pleural sac you see and now when you inhale air or uh, during inspiration air is going in very fast here at the point of entry and by Bernoulli's law whenever the velocity increases you tend to decrease pressure so the pressure here becomes low and the airways, slightly the larger airways tend to collapse on itself. Yes. And now, what happens in the smaller airways? 
in the smaller airways the pleural cavity the vessel pleura along with the lungs try to move out and try to expand and since the pleural surface is closely applied to the airways and the alveoli this force also tends to stretch out the smaller airways and the size of your smaller airways increases so we'll put a chart here what happens during inspiration expiration inspiration expiration larger airways and smaller airways as i told during inspiration larger airways tend to collapse because courtesy to the bernoulli's principle and so the larger airways size tends to decrease during inspiration and uh, the smaller airways size tend to increase with inspiration now moving on to expiration what happens is this force becomes in the opposite direction this force turns opposite like uh, for say it this force tends to act like this and so the smaller airways tend to collapse during expiration the size of the smaller airways tend to decrease during expiration and the larger airways because there is a lot of resistance along uh, the bronchioles and finally it enters the larger airways coming from an area of high pressure to area of low pressure obviously the pressure decreases here and hence the larger airways tend to expand and the size of the larger airways increases during expiration and now you can note that you have a decreased size of the smaller airways during expiration and decreased size of the larger airways during inspiration so you can conclude that diseases affecting the larger airways like tracheal obstruction will essentially cause an inspiratory strider and uh, like smaller airways diseases like emphysema or sometimes even in bronchial asthma you tend to get an expiratory wheeze and that's it uh, for today i hope Uh, to come out with more videos and uh, any suggestions criticisms are welcome and please comment on the chat box and that's it goodbye and thanks